Hey guys, Mohan Pover here, and today I'm going to talk to you about the process of buying a business, the acquisition process. Let's get to it. So yeah, if you want to learn more about the space of buying businesses and having management team and people managing those businesses for us, definitely subscribe to the channel. This channel is all about how to buy businesses, how to have other people manage them for us, and how to do it even if you have little to no capital or experience. So subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button for to make sure you get notified for new videos and let me know in the comments below what kind of videos you want me to talk about. Uh, this channel is for you guys. I'm here to document my journey and yeah, I, I have my agenda too. I know this will bring me more deal flow moving forward and hopefully I'll do more deals. That's, that's my plan. Buy more businesses, grow more businesses, help more people in the process and win-win for everyone. I, ho I hope you enjoy it. So let me know in the comments below what you think and let's get to today's video. So to begin with, if you saw some of my other videos, I think getting into the space of buying businesses and just the process of buying businesses is probably going to be one of the most challenging and at the same time can be the most rewarding you ever did in your life. The ups and downs is just crazy. If you don't have a business yet and you're just fully into that space, you're just looking to buy a business, you're out there looking to find deals and all that. The the experience is just going to be insane. I mean, just the fact that you need to go out there and look for the right business, that can take you some time. You have lots of ups and downs. You can get to a point where you close the deal and then the seller is deciding not to sell it for whatever reason. So lots of nuances and different things that can change and literally make or break a deal. And that's why emotionally you need to be prepared. And just even just initially, when you just looking to buy the deal, that's going to require a lot of work. I mean, just finding the right deal is going to take a lot of work. At the same time, when you own a business, I never heard about anyone owning a successful business who said to me, I want to go back, have a job and work for someone else. I mean, the freedom, the opportunities that you can have from owning a business, I think it's worth it. Even if it's going to take you a few months or a year to buy just one business, I think it's still worth it. Just the adventure, the opportunities, the opportunity and option to be around many different people and sectors. Uh, I think it's definitely worth it. The fact that you go out there and you can learn so much about business, guys. Just the fact that when you present yourself and put yourself out there as a business buyer, as an investor, I think it's amazing. People are going to open up their books for you, like literally everything you want to know about their business. And you can learn pretty much everything about a business doing million dollar a year or even more like multi-million dollar a year. They will open everything in that business for you, all of their process, their systems, their, the, the way for them to hire people. You can learn so much about business just but by putting yourself out there as an investor. I think that alone is worth it. Just the idea that when you start a business with no experience, it's going to take you a lot of trial and error to, to find the right answers on running a successful business versus if you present yourself as, a, as an investor the fact that you put yourself out there and talk to existing business owners who are going to literally give you everything you want to know about their business just because you're the potential buyer. Obviously, you need to know everything about that business. You're going to learn things about their successful business that maybe just one or two more people in their life know about it. And I'm talking maybe like their, their wife, their accountant and lawyer, literally. So you can learn so much about buying businesses just by putting yourself out there for a few months, presenting yourself as an and a potential investor or buyer in the business. Obviously, you need to know how to position yourself and not make mistakes down the road, but uh, just by doing that, you can learn so much about business. You can literally, in my opinion, get a, a 10 years worth of learning curve in business in like a few months of talking to existing, manage, existing businesses when you present yourself as a buyer. I guess one of the main key questions people ask me is, what can you expect before you decide to get into this space and I guess you're asking how much time I'll need to put, how much money I'll need to put because in the end of the day you have a process, you need to find a deal, you need to negotiate a deal, you need to send offers, you need to then complete the deal, obviously raise capital and then own the business. So I want to get you, uh, let you understand what's involved in each of those steps and maybe how much capital needed to maybe just finance yourself. So even when you search a business to buy, you need to be out there uh, spending time on it. So that might take you obviously time that you invest and potentially capital that you need to invest into some kind of expenses. So I want to dive into that. And first of all, I just want to answer people who email me. If you want to work with me personally and my, me and my team, uh, we're constantly looking to buy more businesses. So if you want to come watch our back while we go out there buy businesses and potentially 
get equity just for helping us find good deals uh, definitely see this description below and get in touch and potentially we can buy businesses together and own them together and grow them together obviously uh, we don't work with anyone we need to qualify the right people and make sure there's a fit in in just vibe and experience and energy uh, but if you want to learn more about that definitely check the description below so to begin with when you decide to buy a business you'll need to look at literally hundreds of prospects in my opinion that's at least what you need to aim for because you want to look at many deals before you pick the one that you actually want i don't think you should pick the first deal that you look into unless it's like a really quick deal that you can close just for your experience and learning curve i, I guess but in the end of the day i think your goal should be to look at ideally like hundreds of deals and then determine based on the characteristics that you see in a business that you want to own you need to obviously decide in advance what kind of business i want based on my lifestyle decisions and uh, just income uh, goals and there are videos that i created in the channel just for that and every business we talk to you want to learn everything about the business i'm talking you want to learn about the financials their suppliers their customer their sales process their hr like how they hire people literally you want to learn about everything about that business because in the end of the day you'll be the owner of that business you want to know if this is a business for you if this is a business you really want to own or not and that's how you learn you literally just go talk to them and start your due diligence as soon as possible when you get into the space of looking to buy businesses you also need to decide in advance how are you going to find those businesses so there are a few ways you can and i created videos just on that as well on how to find businesses to buy uh, there are pretty much, I guess you can split those ways into two. One of them is go through brokers and the second one is going directly to business owners. The benefits of working through brokers is just the fact that the brokers literally organize all the information for you and many times just one document that you can scan really fast and decide really fast if this is a good business for you or not. Uh, there are downsides as well with those brokers. First of all, they many times just look to sell those businesses for premium prices which i don't suggest anyone to pay premium prices for a business unless there are amazing synergies and cross-selling opportunities with already existing business that you have the other way is to find businesses directly so to reach out to business owners directly there are lots of ways to do this just to give you one example you can send letters to business owners the difference is that those businesses are not for sale um, at least not listed for sale yet but any business out there is for sale for the right price and terms and many times those owners are not listing their businesses for sale just because first of all they don't even know it's possible they don't have time to do that they're just many times just too focused on their day-to-day -day. and thirdly they're many times afraid of their competitors so they don't like to list their business for sale because they know their competitors might come in and do something sketchy either with their clients their employees and offer them to leave just because they know it's for sale so there are lots of benefits to contact, in my opinion, huge benefits to talk, contact business owners directly, just because first of all, you can get the best deals that way because no one knows about those deals. And secondly, the fact that you can do those deals under the radar, the radar or radar or however that I, I should say that, but you can get really amazing deals at very, very good valuations just because you reached out directly to an owner and presented an opportunity for him to, to sell the business, which he wasn't even aware that it's possible. I guess the only difference is with a business owner that you reach out to directly, many times it might take him a little, it might take him a while to, I guess, arrange all the information that you need in order to make a decision to buy the business or not, which might be a little frustrating in, in case that that owner is just not organized. So that might take you sometimes just literally a few weeks for him to arrange all the information that you need, all the financials, all the, just all the data that you ask in order to make a decision if you want to buy that business or not. The benefit with a broker is that you many times already have that. The broker worked with that owner previously to make sure that he's presenting the right information to the owner. Um, at the same time, in my opinion, it's worth to wait those few weeks many times because when you gather information, you can move really, really fast. And yeah, I guess when reaching out to business owners directly versus brokers, it just, I guess, more time sensitive, it's going to take you more time. You'll need to send letters, go to events, again, use all the different origination methods to find those deals. So yeah, it might take you more time to build rapport, talk to those owners, present to them the idea of selling a business. At the same time, those deals that you can get under the radar or for deals that are not listed with a broker can be literally five ten times more amazing or more good deals versus if you buy them for a broker so in my opinion it's definitely definitely 
crucial, in my opinion, to build that deal flow from business owners directly. Don't focus just on brokers. I think people just go for the the low hanging fruit opportunity. They think it's a low hanging fruit opportunity. It's just a the, the easier way to go is because many times all you can do is just go to a broker website like a biz by sell and just download hundreds of information memorandums and you think that you're progressing and doing a lot of work but all you're doing is just downloading hundreds of deals that everyone already know about them and if they were really that good of a deal I mean people will already buy those businesses versus if you're going directly to owners no one knows about those deals people are just too lazy many times to reach out to business owners and just by differentiate you that way, that alone can many times bring you amazing, amazing deals. So never underestimate how good of a deal you can get from reaching out to business owners directly. I guess one of the next steps when you looking into buying businesses is just filtering companies. So you'll need to ask lots of questions and you'll need to prepare yourself a list of questions in advance to ask business owners as soon as possible to figure out if this is a business I want to own or not. And the faster you ask those questions, the faster you'll get those answers, the faster you'll know if this is a business you want or not. Like for me right now, when I'm talking to business owners, I can literally understand within five or 10 minutes if this is a business that I want or not, just by asking a few basic questions. So you wanna have your questions based on your criteria, obviously, and I guess everyone have their own criteria for the businesses that they wanna own or not based on your lifestyle goals, your income goals and all that, and obviously sector and experience and background. But you need to have, I guess, default questions to ask as soon as possible to filter those deals as fast as possible. Otherwise, that search can be just too overwhelming. If you're gonna look at too many businesses at the same time, in my opinion, it's too overwhelming. You're just gonna waste a lot of effort that's not going to provide you any results. And when you're getting no result, you're gonna be, discouraged I guess discouraged and just not motivated so you need to find a way to filter deals as soon as possible as fast as possible so you'll find out eventually three to five good good deals that you can really focus on and just buy one of them as soon as possible and then after the first deal you'll be so motivated to either grow that existing business or buy other businesses that then you're good as long as you have the results you'll be good to continue but if you're going to work on lots of deals without any progress without any I guess result you'll be discouraged. So make sure you filter lots of those deals as soon as possible. So you'll focus on just your good, good deals. And in the end of the day, it comes down to just numbers game. I mean, in the end of the day, what a good business for you, I don't know, but let's assume that we all want to buy a business at a fair valuation price. We don't want to buy them at more than, let's say two to five times multiples of their three tax profit of the EBITDA. Um, so at least that's the, for me, the basic criteria to begin with. I don't want to buy I guess business is an expensive price just because you don't need to. There are so many businesses for sale. Uh, I think that there are enough businesses out there to pay a fair amount versus going for one or two that you think are better, but at the same time, they're the same. They just want more money for whatever reason. And the reason that people many times willing to buy a business for a, a higher price is just because they're emotionally attached, attached to that business, which I don't think you should be. Never be attached to just one deal. Now the next step in the process would be to send some kind of indication of interest. So the way it works is after you filter your deals, you originate a few opportunities, you filter your deals, you talk to business owners, you're building rapport, you learning about their business, they're learning about you, you sell yourself, they sell themselves to you. Then it's a matter of getting the financials and preparing the offer for the business. Obviously there are gonna be some meetings in between and calls in between to make sure that you're getting all the information that you need about that business. But as soon as you have all the information, that's the time to make that first offer. You're not obligated to that offer, your side or that other side. The first offer is just to, I guess, figure out and understand if both sides are, I guess, in the same ballpark. If your offer represents what the seller expecting. And if the overall, many times if the first offer, the overall price is there, then it's just a matter of figuring out the terms and I guess the overall structures on, let's say, the earn-out payments or the deferred payments that you need to pay for that business over time. Uh, but that's why we send that first offer as a general, and many times it's just like one page offer to just tell them, hey, here's what we believe the business is worth. Here are our terms that we are willing to pay for that business. And let's see if we're even in your ballpark or not. If we're not, let's move on to the next deal. If we are, let's figure out if we can I guess finalize the little, the, the small details in terms in that deal. 
The next step would be an LOI. So if the first offer got accepted, all the terms are good. The LOI is basically the official agreement with all the little details about the deal. Now, with LOI, many times come, uh, I mean, ideally you want to put an exclusivity period as well. So you want to put an exclusive, exclusivity, exclusivity period for around six to eight weeks for you to do the due diligence with your team, with your accountants and lawyers. I would highly suggest to you that even during LOI, you want to never stop originating more deals just because you can never know if you're going to close that deal or not. So never, as a deal maker or someone looking to buy and grow businesses, never stop your deal flow from coming in. Never say no to a deal because even after you sign an LOI, uh, sorry, when you, you just get to a point of LOI and all that, even with LOI, uh, the deal can still, you, I mean, not happen. You can never know what happened. I mean, the owner might say no in the middle of due diligence, he just one day decided, hey, I just don't want to do this deal anymore for whatever reason. And I had it happen literally last month when we were in the process of doing due diligence. And then they own, the business got huge, huge contract that was basically 50% um, of their yearly revenue. And they were just like, hey, sorry, we'd rather own the business with that client and potentially sell it in the future for a much higher price, um, which is fair enough. We can't really control that. So. Things can happen. Maybe the owner just regret it for whatever reason. So you need to be prepared for that. You need to be always out there with more opportunities. And then it's just also going to be, put you in some kind of an abundance positioning when you're not desperate or needy for just one deal. So I think it's really, really important. Even if you're moving forward to close, close to close a deal, closer to close a deal, don't stop your origination. Never do that. But let's say you move towards the LOI and you signed everything, then it's a matter of you do the due diligence. That's when you bring the accountants, lawyers. Many times you can bring in consultants to help you if they, if they have more experience than you in the sector. That's the time for you to ideally talk to maybe some of the customers, some of the employees, some of the suppliers. Really learn about the business day to day and just make sure that all the information that you got initially is really true or maybe the numbers are a little bit different and then you need to change the terms of that deal based on the difference in the numbers that you see right now during the due diligence process. And you just need to figure out basic things like even that the company is paying their taxes and other bills. And for example, when you're doing due diligence, you have an accountant checking numbers. You want to make sure that the numbers and the forecast is looking good as well and that business is going to make the same amount of money that it made at least last year. And just to give you an, a simple idea is the fact that many times if you go into the right business, you have recurring revenue from clients who are paying or at least agree to pay in advance for the next year. So when you have something like that, you obviously want to make sure the contracts are fine, all the little details are there so you know that you can expect X amount of, of revenue or what profit you can expect in the next year. Based on that, you can, I guess, make your due diligence much more or just move with your due diligence much closer to do a deal because now you understand, okay, those are the numbers I got. Now I see that the numbers make sense. The profit is actually going to be there next year as well. So I see that my terms for the deal is fair. Now let's move forward to the next step. And yeah, one one day after due diligence, you'll close a deal. And as uh, Dan Penny has said it, uh, closing deals is better than sex. And I'm, I'm with him on that. I, I, I mean, I think it's, it's definitely amazing. It's probably one of, it's going to be one of the biggest peak peaks in your life. Um, it's like you worked so hard to achieve something that is so meaningful. Uh, the, the coolest thing is that now the real work starts after you buy the business. That's when you really need to organize, bring in your shareholders, create some kind of obviously agreements between you, the shareholder, do some kind of shareholder agreements, make sure everyone holds their role in the job, in, in the business. And that's when the real work starts because that's the time that you want to go into the business and grow it. You don't want to go into a business and make it the same. Um, I believe in life, you either progress or or dying pretty much. So you want to make sure that you have a plan, a legit plan, good fundamentals. You start to get the employees. You start to understand who is the leader, who have the, I guess, the the option to grow in that business. And you want to be there with him to help him grow as much as he can. And that's when you really need to make sure you have the right process, the right system, the right people to take the business to the next step. But yeah, in a nutshell, it's all about being patient and creating more opportunities and understand that failure or setbacks, that's part of the process because you'll talk to many opportunities, many businesses, and some businesses 
you, you'll see you just won't be able to close those deals and that's part of the process but as long as you're going to be committed as long as you're going to be patient as long as you're going to do a little work every day you'll eventually get there so like anything in life you need to be patient you need to be com committed and you need to be persistent with whatever you're doing and i think the coolest thing about this space of buying businesses and the acquisition process is that you'll eventually learn a little bit a little bit about everything in business so you don't need i don't think you need to be an expert in like something specific like be an expert in marketing or be an expert in in finance and understanding numbers but as as you grow in this space of owning businesses of buying businesses you'll eventually know or at least progress and ideally for yourself you need to learn at least the basics in each of the business areas because that's when you can understand the basics, you can know who are the right people to hire, that they are experts. So obviously you can have basics in numbers and accounting, but you want to have an accountant who is a legit expert in that field, who can take over that. You can understand marketing, but you, you don't want to be as the owner, as a shareholder, you don't want to be that, do that day to day. You want to have someone who's the expert in that field, who's doing that for you. And yeah, at the end of the day, you need energy, you need focus, you need to find a way to motivate yourself every day. Because like I said, some deals, you might move forward with them and you'll see just the, the first time you do anything, it, it's awesome, you progress, which is amazing. The first time you send an offer, the first time you get to an LOI, the first time you start due diligence, even if you close the deal or not, that's awesome. You need to tap yourself on, on the shoulder and understand that, hey, I progressed, I moved forward, I'm very close to do the deal. And even if, you clear, even if you don't close the deal after the LOI, you need to understand you moved forward and you learned the process so the next deal will be much easier. You could filter them pretty fast, you can move forward pretty fast until you find the deal that you close. But as long as you keep motivating yourself, as long as you keep the energy, the focus, you'll eventually find your deal and close it. And it's gonna be really rewarding and I, I'm, I, I'm excited for you and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this type of content or want to learn more about buying businesses, growing businesses, definitely subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments below what you think and I'm looking forward to see you in the next video.